<laughs> hello, hello, superstars from around the world. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Mary Satrakian. I'm so thrilled you're here today for my Monday series number nine. Uh, oh my goodness, you're already signing on. I'm so excited. Please, please subscribe and please join the chat. Let me know where you're signing in from. Um, I'm, and if you're subscribed, you can join the chat. And I, I, I'm very much into chatting with you guys and looking at our questions today. Christina Bone is here. Yes. Hi, Christy. So good to see you, honey. Emma Fox. Hi, darling. Hope we have good Wi-Fi today, Emma. I don't think we're going to have the Sardinian issue from last week. I was happy you showed you you checked that out with me. Uh, Alberto, hello. Yes, Sardinia was wonderful in October. It was amazing. I just flew back yesterday. I I just flew back. Lillian, hi, darling. Good afternoon. Yay, you're here. JV, you're driving. Well, keep your eye on the road, JV, but you can listen. Just keep your eye on the road. Okay? Wonderful. Barbara from Milano is here. Hi, honey. Isn't it great? She says, hello, my singing friends. I just love that you guys, we have this lovely community here on my YouTube channel. And if you want to go over to Instagram and join the Satrakinators, uh, my fans uh, organized this, this group called the Satrakinators. It's on Facebook. Come join. It's really fun to be a part of the singing community. And uh, we can all support each other in this wonderful journey of, of song. I just I just love it. Uh, hi, Roseanne. So good to see you. And uh, thrilled you're here. Just to say as we're signing on, as you guys know, but uh, I'm so excited. Three weeks from today. So what? Today is October 25th. Three weeks from today, November 15th. Here in New York City, off Broadway at the Triad Theater. Many of you, Christy, you're going to be there flying in from Chicago. I'm so thrilled for my singing masterclass, Sing, Find Your True Voice, a masterclass for everyone at the Triad Theater. Um, you can check out my YouTube. It's right on the, the first video there. You can see the, the link for tickets. And please, please come sing with us. It's... Um, I've kept the price really low. It's lower than any of the master classes I teach. So even including the two drinks you have to buy. So <laughs> come and um, come and buy a ticket and, and, and just enjoy. I'm going to meet you at the door, by the way. We've got our VIPs that signed, it, signed up really early. And you guys are going to be in the front rows. I'm so, so excited. Hello from Brazil. Hi. Oh, I'm so happy you're here. Thank you for coming by uh, and singing with me today. Uh, so today I'm back in New York. I'm feeling grounded here in my home base. And I've got some really cool questions that we're going to put on, on our feet today. Um, so uh, these are some of the questions. And I'd love for you to kind of pipe in and tell me what you're thinking about this. These are the three questions that we're going to certainly cover today for sure. Hi, Isabel. Oh, thank you for saying hey. Now, are you in Spain? Is that right? Did I get it right, Isabel? I'm so thrilled you're here with us, uh, here with me. Oh, I'm so I'm so honored. Um, so we have a question about how to connect your emotions. Uh, you know, with with uh, the question was like, well, I need to control my emotions and make sure they're right, and uh, that is a that's a big myth. We're gonna we're gonna bust that myth today. Another question about vibrato, another question about pitch. So those three questions I really want to, to, to talk about. Um, yes, indeed. Okay. I remembered you're in Spain. Gosh, I hope I can come see you in person when my book is out. So you guys, my book, oh my goodness, it's on its way. It's at the designer. We're doing the, the final design. It's looking so beautiful. And, um, I'm just so excited to have, to have that so you guys can have the, the proper book in your hands and or the um, the Kindle version or, or the audio book. So I'm putting all three together. Uh, so hopefully, I don't know, we'll see. I'm hoping before Christmas and if not, very, very soon. Okay, uh, I'm really, really thrilled. Thank you, Emma Fox, you're so dear. Okay, so shall we get to the questions right away? What do you think? Thank you, Lillian. I know it's so it's so cool. So, so cool. 
So I'm going to give you a sneak peek at the 10 elements of my method. And when we did the quarantine lessons, I did this. I haven't done this yet on the Monday series. So this is really giving you a real sneak peek into my book. Um, these are the elements. So I call it my revo the revolutionary send. And the reason I call it that is because when you put these 10 elements together, they're elements that they don't belong to me. They're, they're elements that I've learned. But in connecting them together, when you guys find your way to put them together, it becomes sort of revolutionary. It's outside of, it's outside of anything I could teach you. It's something that connects and just, just puts it out into the world. I, I feel like Emma Puskalau is a, is a really great um, example of that right now because she just won an award. She just won first place in the singing competition um, and she's going to be performing at Carnegie Hall next year is the prize. And my other student, Milena Minocchia, she won the same prize last year and got to sing. And what the reason I'm saying this is that they are putting together great technique with their emotions and they're only teenagers. So I sure didn't get this work and with my emotions until much later. So we are not behind. Okay, so here are the revolutionary send elements. I'm keeping it up so that you can write them down yourself. So you'll see, there's five elements of voice technique and every teacher will tell you, and they're right, voice technique is so, so important. Um, but what I came to find out as a singer who moved to New York and was excited to try to be on a Broadway stage, um, it wasn't enough. I had a beautiful voice, a beautiful technique, but I wasn't sharing my my truth, myself, my, my own, huh, my, I hate to use the word authentic because it's very um, redundant or overused, let's say, but authentic self, you know, that was really, truly me. So when I met my mentor, Susan Batson, these are five elements that she taught me. And I call them the emotional life because they really are the elements that uh, uh, how to bring our emotions to the voice technique. And what I found out is bringing the voice, the, the emotional mm -hmm. life to the technique helps the technique. Bringing the technique to the emotions brings the helps the emotions. So one helps the other. So we've done this so many times. The first one is the breath, support, resonance, um, floors. I was thinking in Italian for a minute. <laughs> and pyramid. And we've worked on these already. And if you're new, if you want to go back to lesson number one, you'll get a really good breakdown. We're not going to break it down solid today because we want to move forward. The other side is personalization. We've worked on that fourth wall, what I call sensory condition, need, and action. So we're going to be looking at those today to answer these questions because these questions, they're always involved with these 10 elements. We can always solve them with these 10 elements. Okay. So... Let's go with vibrato and pitch. Let's start with those two questions. Do any of you have questions about like more more specific? Uh, that came from I think Emma Emma Fox. You had that question right about vibrato, and I think she said how to control vibrato. And then um, oh, uh, it was the initials NG. You asked about pitch because you're new to singing and people are telling you. I'm assuming you said you had an issue about pitch. So I, I have a feeling people are telling you you're singing off pitch. Okay, so let's look at that together. So beginning with vibrato, um, there are two schools, and this is going to be in my volume two book. There are two schools of vibrato. One school says that the voice is completely free and at its and, and as it should be with vibrato. When you have vibrato, it means that's your voice, it's a free voice, and that is how your voice works. There's another school of thought that says your voice, natural voice, is straight tone. And when you add vibrato, that's like an ornament. So I think both schools of thought can be, can be true. I think there are probably some people that their natural voice is straight tone. And then when, and mostly for Baroque singers, for early music singers, uh, um, 
I, I had a, a colleague that was an early music singer, and I swear when I saw heard her voice, it was so clean and natural and pure in this straight tone. And she used vibrato only as an ornament. So there is a, a group that is like that. I think that is a small, much smaller group than the natural way to sing is that you have vibrato. Now, many of us, including me, while we're just developing our voices, we don't have vibrato yet. So we, it's like, how do we find it? How do we release it? How do we get it? Now, many of you have vibrato already and you're, this isn't really a question. But what I like about it is that we can, we, as we do this little warm up, we can keep in mind vibrato. Also, we want to have a way to style with vibrato. Maybe the natural voice is with vibrato. That's why so many teachers like to teach you classical voice first. They say the classical voice is really the way the voice is. I don't believe that. I think we all have our own, what I call home base voice. If you wake up like, like Barbara, your voice is a natural belter and you're like a Broadway pop belter. Um, that's your home base voice. You can sing in head voice and have some classical tones, but that's not your home base. Lillian, I, uh, your voice is so divine. I, I, think, I think you're a kind of, um, you're like an Ava Cassidy, whatever that uh, uh, category would be. But I think that's your home base. It's like this beautiful, um, very current, lovely, uh, kind of like a Carol, a Carol King uh, in your own world, you know? Um, so it's sort of a, a, a pop rock, easy rock voice. That's your home base, but you can go anywhere. Um, and then Emma Puskala, your home base is, is a classical voice. I would call my home base classical because I studied classical music for so long. But then once you have your home base, you can go anywhere. So this is what I'm saying about vibrato. If you have a natural vibrato already, we might want to style, do stylings, and this is for men too, especially for men actually, um, that we can style in different, and uh, uh, style our voice so that it can be, you know, classical, we want the vibrato to be free 100%. Pop, we'll do straight tone, add the vibrato at the end. So let me ask you this, Emma Fox, do you already have vibrato in your voice? Is it already there? or you said you need to control it. Can you answer the question, honey? What is it that you're needing? Do you need to find your vibrato? Is that what the question is? Because because we'll, I want to answer that question today. Or is it you feel like you have it, but you don't know how to, let's call it, control it or stylize your vibrato for different, um, for different styles from pop to, to jazz to Broadway to classical? Yeah, you got to hear, Christy, you have to hear Lillian's voice. It's just so magical. And so is yours too, Christy Bone. You can sing every style. You've got your opera voice, your legit voice, and then this belter of unbelievable. So, oh, okay, it's time to sing. Uh, so we're going to start. I'm going to see if, what Emma says about her vibrato, but we're going to go right away with our breath, support, and resonance, right? We have to do a quick run. Now, if this is your first lesson. Please go back to my lesson number one and really go through this. I'm just going to do a quick review now. Um, and uh, so where are your lungs? Here are your lungs. And we're going to breathe like the body does when we're sleeping at night. We're really going to use this involuntary breath and support that our body automatically uses. So when we breathe at night, do we breathe at the top of our lungs or the bottom? Ah, we breathe at the bottom of the lungs. Where is that famous diaphragm? It's an involuntary muscle. So it's right here underneath the lungs. Okay, so I got, when I was in Sardinia, uh, a voice teacher said, well, it's involuntary and it's also voluntary. And I'm like, what? And she goes, yeah, it's also voluntary. I think what that means is we can push and pull it around. Um, it's not comfortable if you push and pull it around. I don't, it's, it's really more involuntary. So what we're using always is we're going to think of the diaphragm only as involuntary. And because then we are using the body economically that we have eight shows a week. This is an economical way 
to use the support and the breath uh, rather than trying to control it. See, control is a, we have to bust the myth of control. Um, I don't love that, that word because it sounds like we are always trying to manipulate. I don't want to manipulate. Okay, here's Emma. So you have vibrato in your voice, but you feel like if you're singing a song from like a musical, you can't seem to get the vibrato at the end of the big note. Okay. So that means you're not having a true release at the end of the note. For the vibrato to come in, you have to really release. So we're going to do a warm up with this straight tone releasing into vibrato very easily. Okay. So Take a breath at the bottom of the lungs. Here's the diaphragm. There's the phrenic nerve. It sends a signal to the diaphragm. The diaphragm contracts, pushes aside these organs. So just the short answer is your tummy is going to release out because the diaphragm is dropping down, pushing aside the organs. So think of the air starting here and surrender into the breath. There we go. Yeah, Emma, doesn't that make sense? Yeah, it really does. You have to release, release, release. So we'll, we'll do that right now. Don't worry, honey. It's good for all of us to practice this because I really want you to have your styling possibilities, especially you guys who are doing Broadway and pop. You have to have this ability to go straight tone into vibrato. Classical music for basically 98.5% of the time, we're just keeping it really super free and with full, full vibrato all the time. We're never, we're rarely doing straight tone. Now, Andrew Lloyd Webber, that's a different thing. You're doing classical voice, but he has more straight tone stylings as you'll see in Phantom. So here we go. Here's our inhale. Great. Easy, easy, easy. Here, just beware. Look in the mirror. Make sure you're not going up here. If you start the breath here, this high breath, which I call the panic breath, you're gonna sing out of pitch. You're not gonna be able to uh, release your vibrato. You're not gonna be able to connect your emotions freely. This, that's why I always start with these first three elements, the breath, the support, and the resonance. Because if, if I have a student who says, oh, and they're breathing up here, it's a domino effect. This starts your breath, you, you won't be able to do the other stuff. Okay, so. Let's go now into the, the support is next. So where is the support of the building? I'm back at home, I'm on the 16th floor. Where's the support? Yeah, it's in the foundation. So we've got the lungs, we've got the diaphragm. We don't wanna hold on to this. We don't wanna control the diaphragm. It's involuntary, it's contracting. The phrenic nerve has sent a signal to that diaphragm and it's contracting. Why would we wanna get in the way with our thought to try to control it? Not a good idea in my book. When I've tried to do that, let me tell you, you get tension everywhere. So the diaphragm's doing its work, dropping down. We're just taking a breath. Now we are going to work with these muscles um, right around the belly button. I would say belly button and an inch below, right about here. And we're going to do the S exercise and scoop it in. And if you see in the mirror that this is free, you're perfect. Now, the support is so important. If you don't have this correct support, if you, for example, are pushing down or trying to hold the diaphragm to support, look at the difference of my neck. If I do an S, now if I try to hold my diaphragm, you can see the muscles are already are pushing up. So please, guys, don't think about the diaphragm for support. We are going under the diaphragm, like my building here. It's the foundation is under. It's not up here on the 16th floor. If they did, this building would be toppled over. So if you don't have the support connected, you're not going to have a free vibrato. You're going to sing off pitch. Because if you're pushing, you're gonna, your pitch is going to rise and go sharp. If you don't have support, you're going to sing flat. Isn't that interesting? I think that's like, boom, that is such a such an important thing to understand. Um, so if somebody um, like NG, you told me that you have pitch issues. If somebody's telling you you're you're singing flat, please go back to my videos that really break down the support here. And uh, because that means you're not engaging your support and the pitch is going under. 
So, but if you're sharp, it means you are pushing everywhere. So it's really good to know. Okay, so now we're gonna connect that breath and support. Let's do the S again. Got it? And you can do this without me, you guys. You can do this in your mirror, in the bathroom, or like I'm just looking in the, the camera. I can see my sternum is just popping out. No tension here. I'm using this energy. I'm going to get tired at the end of the day here, not here. This is the energy. Good. Now, quick review. Here we are. Back to resonance, front passage. Yes, we have vocal cords. It's true. We are not going to focus our attention here on the vocal cords. Instead, we are going to focus on these beautiful cartilage and bones that surround air pockets, and they're going to vibrate like this Perrier bottle. Woohoo! Yeah, like this is your bones and cartilage, and then the inside air pockets vibrate, and boom, that's your voice. So, as my amazing master teacher, Phyllis Curtin, when I studied with her in Tanglewood when I was like 23 years old, she said, Don't think of your throat as your instrument. Instead, let's lift that idea that here is your instrument. And, you know, we've talked about vocal fry and everything like that. We don't want to put our thought into our throat. That is going to tire you out. This is why I can teach this lesson with jet lag. It's because I'm using these elements. Um, and I won't get, I won't, you know, I'll probably have a nap afterwards, but I'm able to do it because I'm, because I'm connected to these elements. So pop-up theater, this is amazing advice. Thank you so much. Connecting is always a challenge. Much love to you, Ireland. Oh, I'm so thrilled Ireland's tuning in. Thank you, honey. Yeah. And I always say this is the morning routine. Do this every day. It takes, then your, your nervous system learns this and it becomes, it becomes this like your second nature. You don't have to think about it anymore. I always, you know, set it up every day and then start trusting it. And if you go, if you're not perfect and you breathe high, just go be aware. Oh, I just was breathing high. All right, let's go back to the right one. We're getting a higher percentage. We don't have to be perfect. As, as Sierra Baga says, perfectly imperfect. That's right. Okay, let's go for sensation of vibration. Notice as I'm speaking to you guys, I am letting the words live right around my cheeks and my mouth. I'm not letting my words live here. I'm, I'm not speaking up here and trying to, trying to put the words up here. I'm just speaking with my with my support, breath support, and feeling the vibration, expecting the vibration around my mouth and my cheeks. This is where the words are living. So let's do S, and then do our good old hum. Mmm, and chew. If you chew, then you'll get more vibration. Again, mmm. Now let's do the lip trill. I do the S first because you guys do the S really well. Then pretend you're doing another S, but instead do the lip trill or do the hum. Hum. Mmm. S. S. Lip trill. Good. Now we're gonna choose a pitch around your around your voice. For many of us, that's middle C. JV, I think that would be middle C for you too, honey. An octave lower. Mi me ma ma mu. We're gonna just do mi me ma. So we're gonna do S, S do a hum. Mmm. Now we're gonna do mi me ma. Mi me ma. And you're gonna loosen your jaw. If you have vibrato right now, just let the vibrato come. Now, we're going to add from my revolutionary send right away. What we've done so far is the breath, support, resonance. Those three elements, super important. Now we're jumping over right away to the emotional life side. We're going to use personalization and fourth wall. So every day, these five elements are really your friend. Think about somebody you'd love to see today. Just put that person who you'd love to see today on your fourth wall. What's your fourth wall? Well, if you're on a stage, it's the imaginary wall between you, the singing artist, and your, and your audience. And it's a way to cocoon yourself and really be private with this person. So right now, we have to practice, you know, singing to a person who's not really there. Um, so what, what do we do? We think about what is their, what is their strongest physical feature? Oh, I always use, I always talk to you guys. I often use my dad. 
Um, so you can use somebody, you know, my dad's passed away, but I always feel him nearby. So I love like, you know, I always talk to my dad and my mom for that matter. <laughs> they both passed away, but they're, they're very, they're very nearby. And I hope your loved ones too, who aren't with you right now are really nearby. Just listen and chat with them. I tell you, they show up. It's so fun. Okay. That's another class, but you know, got to put that in there. So on your fourth wall, just like I'm looking at my, my wall in front of me, and I have a Les Miserables poster. How cool. And I'm just going to um, put my dad's eyes there or his face there. And we're just going to send our exercises to your person who you'd love to see today. Somebody who you, you miss very much. If they were far away from you, you'd miss them so much. Maybe they are far away from you. Christy, are you using your dad too? Um, you know, it's very emotional. Oh, well, let's have emotions today. Let's not clean them up. Let's not control the emotions. That was my, yeah, of course you are, honey. I know we're sisters in that, right? <laughs> we use our dads. Uh, I know you. It's so good. Um, so let's use our father or use just whoever you want. It could be, uh, your boyfriend, girlfriend, somebody who, who, uh, a, a relative, when in doubt, use one of your parents. This is great. You're going to use your grandma. Oh, that's so cool, Emma. She's turning 95. Wow. And she's very far away. There we go. So we're using somebody that's very far away. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that person. What's what's your, your grandma and Christy, what's your dad's strongest physical feature? Maybe their face, their eyes, their hair. Um, maybe they're tall, short, I don't know. And what's their strongest human quality? Think about that. You know, my dad was quite brilliant. Um, so we're just going to put that person, their human quality. Uh, Isabel saying you're going to use your grandmother and she's in America. Oh my gosh, it's so touching to, to read your messages. I just love that. So and I love that you're using family. I think that's a really good choice. So we're going to just do a pitch around your mouth. Today, we're not going to worry about high notes. We're just going to focus in on, right now, we're going to do vibrato. But we're all, also going to focus in on connecting to our emotions. OK, so we do an S, do an M. Mm. Now you're going to reach to them and send and see them right there. Take a breath. Good. Now you're gonna say, what'll I do? What'll I do? Good, breathe. Send again. What'll I do? Good, now you're gonna say the real uh, melody of What'll I Do by Irving Berlin. Listen once. What'll I do? Sing that together. Breathe. Reach to them. What'll I do? Good. Now, if that feels too high, we don't. We're not worried about high notes right now. You can do a lower pitch. Here's a lower pitch. Breathe. The belly button sends. What'll I do? Good. Again. Breathe. What'll I do? Good. Now here are the words. What'll I do when you are far away? Here's the melody. What'll I do when you are far away? Let's try that together. Breathe. What'll I do when you are far away? So right now, we're just keeping the vibrato moving through. If you have vibrato, great. If you don't, just make it where it naturally feels. What will I do when you are far away? I'm going to do the higher key now. Here it is. breath and reach to your person breathe what'll I do when you 
far, far away. Good. One more time. Same thing. Breathe. Let's do the low one. Sorry. Sorry, I'm changing the key. What'll I do? Breathe. S. Take a breath. What'll I do when you are far away? Good. So you have the option. You can sing lower or higher, whatever you like. Hello, beautiful Sabina. Ciao, Sabina. Dove sei? In Sardinia. There's one of my oh, beautiful Sardinian students. Okay, here we go. We're going to finish this little melody. What'll I do when you are far away and I am blue? What'll I do? Now, if the lyrics are too hard, oppure parli in italiano e non puoi parlare in inglese, adesso usare, usate la la la. You can always just use la. La 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 la. But you have to have the person, the person who you miss so much. And that brings us to the need. This, this personalization is going to bring you to the need. Here, sorry. The need over here. I'm reading it backwards on my end. Um, so the need is this unfulfilled emotion for that person. What is your need? My need is to be loved by my dad. My need is to be understood. My need is to be heard. My need is to be with him. My need is to have a hug with him. A hug is also the need to be loved. So this is bringing us to this emotion of need. So, hey, Meg, hi, darling, here you are. Is the aim to sing it all in one breath? No, Janet, we don't have to sing it all in one breath. So I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to do that way. The aim is to connect to your person. And we're gonna, I still haven't forgotten vibrato, I promise, Emma. Um, Yes, Dorothy sang it on the Golden Girls. Oh, good. Well, don't clean up. Christy says she's tearing up because she remembers it from the Golden Girls. Hey, by the way, I was on the Golden Girls once, way back when. Yeah, I was I was an extra, but I was a special extra. It was the one where uh, where Betty White is, is at the dog show. So if you see the dog show, you'll see me in the background. Hilarious. Anyway, um, oh, you weren't feeling well. I didn't read the rest of your message, Meg. You've had a bad cold. Okay, just watch. Yeah. And if you feel emotional, let the emotions come out. Okay. Yeah, isn't that fun? It was really cool. My friend um, Lex Passeris was an associate director, so I got to I got to hang with the gang. And uh, anyway, Betty, I got to sing "I Dreamed a Dream" for the crowd, and Betty White gave me a big hug. And I mean, it was like it was like one of those moments you'll never forget as long as you live. Okay, back to our work. So here we go. Let's have a drink of water, keeping hydrated. This is my beautiful mug. I'm, I'm dropping names today. Nicole Kidman gave me this mug. Yeah. So anyway, let's drink that. All right. Okay, so here we go. Whew, we're going back to our person. Let's do their S. As you inhale, think of your need for this person as your need to be, let's all, let's all want to just get a nice hug from this person who we miss so much. Let's all use the same need, which is basically a need for a hug or the need to be loved, the need to be near them. Okay, so let's, let's go for this need to be hugged and we'll breathe into that need. This is the way to get connected to our emotions. This is, this is not controlling our emotions. This is just letting that arrive. And if you start sobbing, awesome. I'm a little jealous because it took me, then we have Kleenex, you know, it's not against the law to sob. It's actually, that's when you start winning awards. Um, so please, it's not about controlling them and making it right. If we sing this song and you're sobbing all the way through, all the better. 
I used this song in a one woman, my one woman show, and I would sob through this song. It was so, so wonderful. <laughs> it was so fun. Um, that's another story about this one woman show I did in LA, seven weeks. Uh, it was called A New York Romance. So this is why this song is also very close to me. Okay, so we've got our breath support. We know the lyrics now. And so we're gonna take more breaths. It's, it's, a, it's a really good point that Janet had. We don't have to, we don't have to do this in one breath. So let's just, let's just reach to our person and we're gonna sing. What'll I do? Just sing, what'll I do? Take the breath, reach to them. What'll I do? Breathe when you are far away. And I am blue. And I am blue. What'll I do? Now you don't have to reach to them, but the reason I'm doing this is because you're always sending. You're always sending, and this arm kind of reminds us that we're sending. Okay, so now we're gonna do that with the idea of vibrato. So let's start with what'll I do? So the, the connection with the tone always initiates from the support, and support is leading that. Let's think about this in straight tone. What'll I do? So you're gonna just do straight tone. It's like through this little laser beam. What'll I do? Now, we're going to release it at the end, Emma. You're, gonna, you're sending through the straight tone just with thought. It's kind of weird. <laughs> you just think it and it's enough. And then you're just gonna release, release, release. Breath. What'll I do? Yeah, again, breath. What'll I do? Yeah, one more time, breath. What'll I do? Now that, if you don't have vibrato, that's a really fun exercise to use um, to do this, do your regular, your regular straight tone and then really release it. Let's go up a little bit. So a little higher. What'll I do? Now, if you don't have vibrato, you might wanna have fun with that and kind of shake your voice a little bit. I know it's just, it's just waking it up. Don't worry, it's just kind of doing what we call the trill. What'll I do? Yeah. What are you aware of? Oh, it's working! Yay, Emma! Good! So I think the key word for you, honey, which you already gave me the little heads up when I mentioned it, is the release. You're thinking control the vibrato and make it happen. Instead, you've got to release your voice and let it do what it wants. This is why I hate the word control. <laughs> we're setting up all these elements and we're living them. Now, uh, let's see what was, let's do, there's our melody. Okay, so what will I do when you are far away? and I am blue, what'll I do? So now, to get even more into the need, you want to think of a time when you didn't have this person. What was the worst day when you lost this person, when you didn't have this person, when you needed this person's love, you needed a hug from them, but you didn't have it? It might be today, and you could use that, but you want to go back to that time. Maybe it was like in 2010 when, when I got the phone call that my dad had a heart attack. I was here in New York and my family was in San Francisco. I might go back to that time. Or, uh, so I'm just suggesting a time. Um, so let's think about that for a minute. Let's see. We've got time, I'm so excited, okay. So we're going to all settle in for a minute and just sit and you can close your eyes if you want. We're going to do a sense memory 
of a time when this person who you miss so much, if they were, they were far away from you, you're now going to go back to a real time, a moment in your life. It might be when you were a kid. It could even be when you were a child. I often also use when I was three years old and I had my tonsils out. That was a really lonely moment in the hospital with nobody there at three years old. And uh, yeah, that hits me every time. And when I woke up in my room and nobody, not, my family wasn't there. So, uh, so you, can, you can go back to a time in childhood. You can go back to uh, something more recent or seven years ago. Um, but we're going to use the pat me uh, sense memory of the past. So Christina says she's going to be on the floor sobbing. I would say, honey, go for it. I know that you're amazing. And, you know, later you can clean up. Right now, just don't clean up. Just keep breathing, okay? Just let it, let it come out. And we're going, to, we're going to make art out of it. That's the really cool thing is we're going to make art out of it. We're not going to clean up and we're going to make art out of it. Okay, so we're all going to just relax for a moment. Think about when you needed this person when you needed a hug from them um the worst day isn't this crazy we have to go back to the worst day um but it's so cool because this will also be healing for us okay so we're going to go back to the worst day how long ago was that was that many years ago just answer these questions to yourself was it many years ago what time of year was it was it winter spring summer or fall when you really missed this person, when they were far away and you needed a hug from them. This moment when you, when you missed them and needed them, where were you? I'm sorry, what time of day was it? Was it the morning, midday, afternoon, evening, middle of the night? What time of day was it? And now where were you? Was there something in that place that you'll never forget? Was there somebody there or did somebody say something or do something that you'll never forget? And maybe you were all alone. Now this is the important one. What did you want to say but you didn't? Even without their presence, what did you want to say but you didn't say it. And if you said it, what did you really want to have understood? So right now, we're just gonna get it out. So wherever you are, and if Christy, you're on the floor sobbing, even better, you're gonna just scream out the thing that you wanted to say. Like, for me, it's like, where are you? Where are you? Yeah, so let it out, get it out now. Get it out, really get it out. Whew, good. Now, that's the pulse of your need. This is the art form of finding the need. So now you are in this sensation. Don't clean up. Don't get Kleenex and try to clean it all up now. Now we're going to sing through that. See your person on the fourth wall, and we're going to sing right through that. Here we go. What will I do when you are Good. We're going to repeat that. Keep breathing. Don't clean up. And just whatever that emotion is, you're just going to sing it right to them. I can do it a cappella this time. Just right to them. We see my person on my fourth wall. And we're going to sing right through that. Here we go. You can take breaths whenever you want. Just speak through that and send. Send to them on your fourth wall. What do I do when you are far away? And I am blue. What will I do? Let's repeat it one more time. What will I do when you are far away? And I am blue. What will I do? Let's do that together. One, two, three. What will I do?
Great work. What are you aware of? Please come on and type in what are you aware of? I'm aware of that suddenly my dad arrived. <laughs> And you miss, I miss him all right. You know, it just comes up and it's just like, where are you? And then he always says, honey, I'm right here. It's like, oh, okay, you're right here. But it's not the same, you know, as in person. So I've been doing this for years and years and years. So um, I can try to chat with you guys and then drop in. And th that's why this takes practice. So Emma, you're aware of how much you miss your Oma. That's beautiful, honey. Gorgeous. Were you able to speak through that and sing through that melody to her? I love that. I love that awareness. Janet, what are you aware of? Meg, I know you're not singing, but you might have an awareness. Christy, uh, Lillian, what are you aware of, honey? Um, JV, I know you're in the car, so don't be uh, don't be putting your fourth wall on your <laughs> on your window. Um, great, you were able to sing through it. That's amazing, and I'm so glad we solved. We solve the vibrato issue. I love that. Now to answer the pitch issue as well, when you use the fourth wall, when you use your need, when you use the personalization, that is magic and it lines up the pitches. Notice I didn't say, now think about those pitches. What will I do when you, that'll get you off pitch. These are the elements that will help you connect right to the pitch. Okay, Isabel. Oh, Lillian. Okay, you're aware you used your old memory of hugging someone who passive aggressively didn't hug you back. You felt sadness and anger. Oh, I love that choice. That is such a great choice. And, um, and then we don't clean up. We don't control or decide how much we're going to show or reveal. Don't go there. If it's, it's going to be, it might be stuck. It might not be, maybe some of you don't feel anything right now. That's okay. Um, you just want to step in and just keep practicing this. It took me so many years. <laughs> you guys are quicker than I ever was to understand that. So that's beautiful. Isabel took a bit to sing through crying into sing, sing. I love it. I, even if it's, away, you were sending you weren't just, okay, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to cry. If that's what you're doing, honey, victory. Oh, I'm so thrilled. So pleased. Christy is aware that you can dive into these feelings. Emotions are not be totally destroyed. For the first time, you're able to get through the line without stopping. Ah, now you're giving me full body chills, Christy, because, you know, we work during the quarantine. We even did um, some Zoom classes with my quarantine gang. And you've always done such great work. But to say that you kept going now, this is the process. You're, su I'm, you're such a great example of the process. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, Emma, you're so welcome. Right. I did not think about the pitches. That was so unnatural for me. Yeah. The, um, the question from NG when he said, you know, I know that he had somebody say to him, think about the, the pitches. And, you know, I, w I did a workshop once with a, with a wonderful casting director who was listening and he, there was somebody who sang a bit off pitch and he said, you know, we, we need, I, and he told her, you need to think about the pitches. And when the, the actress left, I said, actually, you're wrong. It, they, they can't think about the pitches. This was a, an improvement. And so we have to train people not to say, think about the pitches. Um, so Janet, Thinking of your your 95-year-old mom. Oh, you're near London. Oh, honey, thank you for sharing that. And were you able to speak through it and sing through that? Add, add the pitch of what will I do? How did that go? Really well? Yeah. Great, Isabel. Okay, pop-up theater. Much love to you, honey. Thank you for being so vulnerable. Oh, I well, thank you. I'm so glad you're enjoying this master class. It's it's, this is the element that changed my career and it changed my life. After I was able to find this connection, that's when I booked Les Miserables on tour. I was on tour for two years. That's when I booked Eva Perron um, singing in Evita. I was an understudy and then I got to go on into Eastburg, Germany. I was even offered the role um, in Germany, but I was on tour with Les Mis, so I couldn't take it. But I tell you, this is the key. 
And this is why my students are winning awards, I believe too, because they're not only beautiful voices, but they're finding how to connect these emotions and just really good. Oh, I love Lillian. You're just, I love the support. Thank you, honey. Yeah, well done, Christina, right? She's phenomenal. Okay, Isabel, I did have to remember some old Stanislavski les lessons. Yeah, it's very related to Stanislavski. Taught us to choose strong moments, but not destructive ones and switch a bit. Okay, cool. Um, uh, I, you know, if that works for you, I think that's great. I think when Susan Batson taught me, uh, you know, she worked, um, you know, with, with Lee Strasberg. And uh, I think we never even gave it a, a, a confinement of, you know, which, which one to use. Obviously, what, what Susan would often say is maybe don't use something that's so close to you right now. Um, and that could be very similar to the destructive one. If it's too close to you, it's changing and, you know, going in different directions. Sometimes it's better to use something from the way past or from childhood because that's uh, a little easier to access. So we love Stanislavski. So that's great. So when focusing on the emotion, totally unaware of the physical aspect, and it happens so much more naturally. Ah, that is genius. That should be in my book. That's right. When we, well, it is in my book, but I love the way you put it, that when you're focusing on these things, on your personalization and your sending, and by the way, we did technique. Every time I start this class, I hope you guys aren't getting bored because I'm like, here, where's the breath? There's the diaphragm. Let's do the support. Let's connect to your, your voice through the front passage resonators. We are doing technique. Now, this is what I mean, that the emotions help the technique and the technique help the emotions. And so it happened naturally. Now, if we had started and you had a high breath and I told you to get connected to your emotions, you would have been jammed, blocked. I promise you would have been jammed. You, that you're telling me that all these five elements, the breath, support, resonance, connecting with your fourth wall um, and your personalization and the sixth one, need, the need for that hug, it all happened so much more naturally. Amazing, amazing. Excellent, sort of it. Yeah, okay, Isabel. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it sounds like what, you chose is working for you. For me personally, I had to choose the worst day from my past, you know, to, to break through, to, to break through and get my emotions to release. So I'm not saying what he said is wrong. That's for sure. I just know for me, it was like the most devastating emotion, the most de devastating event for me. Um, but it's, it's, it's not a, it's, it's not like a, a scary situation. It was just an emotional situation. So I think it's really good advice. What you said, I really, really like it. Okay. Wow. Now I know we only did the first line. Do you want to do the second line? I think we have time. Shall we do it? Okay. So the next line is, is the same melody. So we're just adding a different, uh, text. And it's very, very emotional. What'll I do when all I'm wondering who is kissing you? What'll I do? Now, obviously, this is a romantic one. So those of us who are using our parents or our grandparents, it's okay. We can still use them. It doesn't have to be a romantic kiss. It can just be like you're in heaven and you get to be with my friends in heaven. You get to be there instead of with me. I'm wondering who you're with. You're not near me. Or if you're using an, uh, an ex-lover or ex or somebody who, like Lillian was sharing, who she wanted to be close to and they were rejecting her hug, that'll, this, this, that's going to work really well, Lillian, with this text, really well. Oh, thank you, Barbara. You said you were in my story. You're making my day. Thank you. It, you know, the truth is when you're really in it, you don't really know. So, <laughs> so that means so much to me. So let's try the second the second line. Here it is. What will I do when I think the words are when all I'm wondering who is kissing you? 
All I'm thinking, who is kissing you? I think I changed the words. Sorry, Irving Berlin. So what will I do when all I'm thinking, who is kissing you? What will I do when all I'm thinking, is kissing What will I do? What will I do when I am? I like mine. So we'll do mine. <laughs> what will I do? When all I'm thinking, who is kissing you? What'll I do? Let's sing that together. What'll I do? Can say wondering. I don't know. I just wanted to choose words that were really close to me when I did the show. So I think I did a little uh, little switch. Okay. Should we put this together? One more time. So we're going to go back to the thing that you wanted to say, but you didn't. That sentence is going to get you back into that need. I keep pointing here, meaning the pulse. It's going to get you into the pulse of the need. I was like, where are you? You're not here when I woke up in the hospital. Where are you? I need you holding me. I need you protecting me. I need you to be with me. So what was the thing you wanted to say? That's what you're going to say right now. You're going to see your person on the fourth wall. If the place is really strong for you, you can even put the person in that place. So let's do this together. You can just see your person on the fourth wall. Now remember the breath. Let's do an S. Breathe into the need. Take a breath and say, what'll I do? One more time. What'll I do? Now we're not going to control. We're just going to hang in that. What'll I do when you far away and I am blue. What'll I do? What'll I do when all I'm thinking who is kissing you? What'll I do? Okay, let's do this with the word with the music. Yeah, I've got tears. Here we go. You're gonna just see your person. And la la if you don't want to, just take a breath, S, S breath and say a hum. Mmm. And speak through that and send your person on the fourth wall. Keep the need alive. If sobbing comes up, awesome. Nothing, just release away. Let's release away. Let's add a little bit of oil to our face this time. Just a little bit of oil. See your person. Breathe. It goes up high. For those of you who've been here before, it's a higher floor and smaller space. What will I do with just a photograph to tell my troubles to? Write that down. What will I do with just a photograph to tell my troubles to? Here's the melody. What will I do? So this 
this is cool because it's going straight up and it's really this tight, uh, tight rate, uh, laser beam. What'll I do with just a photograph to tell my troubles to? Now remember those high notes. We had those lessons on high notes. That belly button's really sending it and the space is tighter. Here's the last line. When I'm alone with only dreams of you that won't come true, what'll I do? Oh my God, back into the knee. When I'm alone with only dreams of you. Same as the first melody. Isn't Irving Berlin brilliant? It's so amazing because it's just so simple yet amazing. Let's do the bridge. So that's what am I do with just a photograph to tell my troubles to. When I'm alone, when I'm alone with only dreams with all Dreams of you, of you that won't come true, that won't come true. What will I do? Good. We're now going to do the whole thing. Last time through, the whole thing. And if you don't know, just sing la la and just go with the melody. I'll try to be right on the melody. Okay. So, first things first, we set up the fourth wall. Got the fourth wall, you've got your person. You've got the time you remember you needed that person. Yeah, you needed to hold them. What was the thing you wanted to say, but you didn't? Ah, that brings you to the pulse of the need. Feel the emotion there? Yeah, then we breathe into that. Do an S, take a breath, say hmm, hmm. Wonderful. So let's try this together now. see our person on the fourth wall I'm trying to read music at the same time I'm not the best pianist but that's okay drop in see the person remember the place that will help you here we go what will I do Mouth released, keep seeing it, take a breath, don't leave the space, just stay with your person. Beautiful. Good work. That was pretty quick in an hour. You guys are so amazing. I'm just so honored you're here with me doing this. Um, we can always go back and take a look at it. Um, but remember, we went through our vibrato, we went through the, the, the questions about pitch. And we just connected your emotions. Doug Webster. Oh, my gosh. Doug Webster's the best. I met Sierra Boggess because of Doug Webster and his American um, singer uh, musical theater uh, workshop that he hired me to teach in um, Breckenridge, Colorado, many, many years ago. And then we taught together in Australia. And uh, I just love you so, darling. And thank you for your, your beautiful words. <laughs> <laughs> He's in Portland and you heard you heard our voices right with you. 
A mighty punch is the simple song. Yeah, that simple song. You're right, dear Christy. Uh, Irving Berlin really got this song right. Tears welled up, especially with the last line. Excellent. It's great to leave them with that with that emotion. And please don't clean up right away. Let it live. If When you guys are doing auditions, don't just like finish and go, and done. You stay in the mood. You stay there. You let it breathe. I'm still just like freaking out that Doug Webster's here. I'm just so happy. JV, I'm so happy you're singing with us. And uh, I've got some men here, Doug. It's so cool. I always want to ask your, your advice with the beautiful men's voices, but I think we got it. Dalia, I feel when I'm sad and crying, getting having vibrato is easier. Ah, that's because you're releasing. You can't hold your emotions. And so your vibrato comes because you're not trying to control. Love that. Maybe because the voice is kind of shaking when you're sad. I don't know, something I noticed right now. So I just answered the question. When you're in your, this is what I'm talking about. The emotions help the technique. Your emotions just now let your voice be free. So you you couldn't try to control it. You were just in your breath and support, and then it naturally it went to that natural vibrato. Ah, oh, mind blown. That is so cool. So Isabel from Spain says, really felt like the biggest release came with the highest note in my case. I, well, it's the climax of the song and really one of my favorites. What did I do with just a photograph to tell my? It's such a beautiful note. It's a, it's a, it's above the passaggio, and so you have to get it really tight um, in that tight space up there. Yeah, it's up to a D. So those of you who are doing it in the classical voice, that's totally fine. But there's something really cool about that more sort of poppier place with the belt. And I still haven't answered this belt question, which I, shall we do that next week? Oh, Emma, I'm so glad you're feeling inspired. Um, just feel like making music now. Now, this is what I love. I just took you through a deep, painful exercise, and now you feel inspired and you want to make more music. This is what I'm saying, is that when we take the deepest, darkest stuff of our lives and and make art out of it and connect it. There's something so magical about it, about the healing that happens. We heal our audiences because they're able to release their emotions and we release our emotions. They don't have the gift that you guys have of connecting your emotions to your talent of your voice. And, and I, I also am a, a believer that even if you're not a singer, you can, you can, you know, do this as, as a fun, joyful thing and a way to, you know, those of us who, who work on our, our lives, like I, you know, like I think a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about therapy and how that can be when you're with a good therapist, it can be very, very helpful to find out what's going on in your life and, and why, and you get to understand things, but what we get to do is we get to use it. So we get to take that sadness, take that breakup, take that loneliness that you might feel and use it and make art. And then it's like we realize that us as a full human being with all of our imperfections of all of our, our rainbow of color from bliss to devastation, that we are enough and that we can use all that and, and make art. And Emma just said she just feels like making more art right now. I love when I'm sad. I come to my piano and I just sing and sob and, and uh, it helps get those emotions to move through us. Sickness comes when we hold it all in and it gets jammed. So singing is also this healing gift for us. It's so healthy and wonderful to use singing as a, as a healing device, I think. And Chrissy says singing or just being creative with our sadness helps mend a broken heart. I agree. I agree. I, I think Susan Batson would always just say, she would just say, this is not therapy. We are not trying to fix it. We are using it and we're just using it in the work. But I like taking it a little bit further. What Christy says is, is that it also, it's, it's this beautiful healing device. And it's also a device for me, a device. I don't like that word either, but a process. Let's say that a process that 
helps you understand yourself so you can be more authentic, more truthful, more who you are in this world. Because each and every one of you has a purpose and a gift. And whatever that purpose is, it's revealing itself. And to have all the nooks and crannies of every part of you alive makes you whole and makes you makes you give something really special to the world because it's not just just happiness doesn't doesn't help us know everything it, it there's something in the depth and uh you all did this today i'm very very proud of you oh good Dalia. i'm so happy it makes sense all right so any last awareness and we'll sign off we did so great in our hour it's 1 11 p.m in new york so that's the angel time 11s is the angel show up and say hey great work everybody <laughs> we connected with the um with the eternal spirit and we connected with your true emotions and you connected real technique of my revolutionary sin which is again just elements that that many teachers use, but putting them together in these, these 10 elements, that, that's what my book is about, is, is practicing these 10 elements together. And I just can't wait to share it with you. And just a reminder for November 15, if you're near New York or if you can get yourself there, please, please go to triadnyc.com um, and you can uh, go scroll down to November 15 and, and Grab your ticket and tickets and come on by. It's going to be such a special evening. Thank you, Isabel. Your work was so beautiful. And thank you guys for sharing your intimacy, you know, into me see. And the fact that you're, you're sharing with us, I think you're going to help many, many people who will be watching this video. Um, your, your contributions are, are just helping so much. Lillian says, thank you, Mary. Always a pleasure to attend your live lessons. Uh, thank you, honey. And she says, take care, everyone. And that's what I'm saying to you guys, too. Take much, much care. I'll be back here in New York every Monday until November 15. So please come on back. Um, I don't know. Is it time for the ladies to do that belting thing? Uh, also, the information about high belting for the ladies is going to be really some interesting um, technical advice for the men, for your voices. Uh, there's something that that connects with that. So we can do that next week if you want. Beautiful. Okay, my darlings. Bye for now. Thank you for joining me. And please, please mark on your calendars for next week. If you can come live, it would be so awesome. And uh, and be sure to mark your calendars for, for November 15 and go to triadnyc.com and grab your tickets because seating is limited. And uh, I just can't wait to see you all there. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Christy, Janet, Emma, Doug Webster, um, and, and Bill. I don't know if you came today, but if you watch this video, thank you, Bill Ramsey, for being here and my mentor in life as well. Okay, lots of love, you guys. A dopo. Next time. See you soon. Ciao.